free fall. And uh, free fall is basically acceleration due to gravity alone, nothing else. Um, it doesn't account for uh, any wind friction, things like that. So basically, gravity, the universal constant, at least for Earth, is 9.8 meters per second squared, uh, which can also translate to 32.2 feet per second squared. And basically what we're going to do is we are going to throw a soccer ball from a balcony, and with that, we are going to calculate the distance that it fell using uh, the acceleration, which you know is gravity, and time, which we will calculate when we do that. And then we will also figure out the uh, relationship with the velocity and time. So we're going to figure out what the velocity is uh, when it is dropped and what the velocity is before it hits the ground. <laughs> okay, so our experiment is to find out the height of this building using free fall. So we're going to drop it and time it, and then we're going to find the distance, and then we're also going to find the distance, or speed and velocity. Mm -hmm. And um, so before it hits the ground, we're going to see how fast it's going. Say go when you drop it so I can look at the ground. Okay, so to see the contrast, contrast clearly, we're going to drop it from the third floor and also make a graph of the distance and the speed of the hole. So now that we did the experiment, we're going to basically break down the physics of what happened. And so we have two tables here. This is for our first trial. This is our second trial. And um, in our first column, we have um, our time, the distance to travel during that time, velocity, and our acceleration. And the same thing down here, too. Um, and so because the experiment was really fast, we did it by a tenth of a second. So normally, gravity will be. 9.8 meters per second squared. But because we're dealing with a tenth of a second, we took this and we broke it down um, into a tenth of a second. So that gives us 0.98 meters per tenth of a second. And so that's the acceleration thread. This one, this one is 1.96 per two tenths of a, um, a second. And so there's that. So what we're finding is the distance from the first balcony and the distance from the second one. And so, if we use our formula of distance equals one half acceleration times time squared, we plug that in. So we plug in our variables of um, plug in for gravity, and then time for our first one is 0.35. And then if we plug that in, we get distance equals um, 0.6 meters. And for our second one, over here first, and our second, we'll have distance equals um, 3.37. And so that was the distance we calculated of our balcony. However, because we had, uh, when the basketball was falling, we had a lot of wind resistance. And because we're human and we can't exactly, perfectly get the exact time, especially when dealing with a tenth of a second, it wasn't exactly accurate. And so, um, I took a tape measure and actually measured it. And what our actual result was, for the first one we had um, 2.4 meters. And for a second trial, we had 7.62. And that was our actual. Quite a bit off, but taking into account wind resistance and human error, there's that. So um, if we do take our actual distance, we can, after that, figure out the 
um, velocity. And so, if you plug in your equation, I'm going to have space here. Let's go here. Okay. Velocity equals distance over time. And so our time wasn't 100% accurate, but if we do plug it in, so we had a distance, let's do the first one, of 2.4, and our time was 0.35. And then if we plug that in, four. Okay, so if we actually plug it into our calculator, then we get that velocity equals 6.8 meters per second. Or our velocity just right before it hit the ground. And that was going with our original time. Now, if we had a perfect timer, and the conditions were right, we would have gotten a different um, result um, somewhere in this range on the table, but uh, if you did have the, a perfect um, timer, then you would have gotten a more accurate result, but you can use the same math. So that concludes our presentation on free fall. Uh, so we not only talked about free fall, but we, uh, there's lots of different things you can find using free fall, like the distance that um, something is dropped or the velocity that it has before it hits the ground. So yeah, that concludes our experiment. <laughs>